I decided to create a tutorial for my students. Instead of me writing it on the board and no one can read my handwriting because my handwriting is terrible. So I decided to do this. So the way you use this thing at home is you step through it. If it takes you five minutes to read the title page, that's fine, the title slide. I take five minutes to do it. But then you step through it. You read this one. These are my words. These are words I wrote to explain the process for you. And of course, I'm not going to stand here and just read it. I'm going to explain it to you. But know that at home, you can read these. And usually what happens is what follows it is a picture that explains this in picture form. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step through it with you. OK, so the first process here is in cellular respiration is glycolysis. The first event is that the six carbon sugar will break down into two pyruvates. It's equivalent to me doing this. Watch this, six carbons. Here they are, six carbons. Six carbon sugar. Here's glycolysis. If you blink, you're going to miss it. That's it. You see that? So you take six carbons, you break it in half, you get two pyruvates. It's a series of uh, chemical reactions and I group them into two parts, one set followed by the other set, and I'll explain it to you. Now watch this. After you create the pyruvates, what happens to pyruvate depends on whether you have oxygen or not. If you do not have oxygen, the pyruvates will ferment. See? You have to get rid of the pyruvate. That's no, there's no question about that. So sometimes your muscle cells, because you're exercising, you don't have oxygen. They, they are deficient because you're exercising for a long time and they don't have access to oxygen. So they're gonna take the pyruvate and they're gonna ferment it. Right now, you're not fermenting because you're not stressing your cells, your muscle cells you're respiring. You're taking your pyruvate and sending them to the mitochondria for cellular respiration. So those are the two options. Without oxygen, the pyruvate products of glycolysis ferment. With oxygen, the pyruvate products of glycolysis go through pyruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. They, they, do, they do the whole movie now. See, this is like a short movie. Glycolysis, ferment, movie is over. This one is a longer movie. Glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. Then the movie is over. But the, the, the difference is this, without oxygen, with oxygen. So we're going to talk about glycolysis first, which is in common with both of them. Glycolysis occurs regardless of oxygen being there or not. That doesn't matter. Whether you have oxygen or no oxygen, glycolysis does not care. Oxygen comes in play at the point of pyruvate. you got to listen to this. At the point of pyruvate, a decision is made. Do I ferment or do I do the rest of this? You can tell that the rest of this is very complicated. Do you agree? So your cell decides this. Why? Why do I go through all the trouble if oxygen is not there? See, to finish this process, at the end of this whole process, the cell says, oxygen must be there. So for example, we're going to use Lortzen as oxygen. I'm pyruvate. I will ask Lortzen, the first time I ask you Lortzen, say, yes, I'm here, okay? I will ask Lortzen, oxygen, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Then I do this. 
Okay, now you're gonna say no. Oxygen, are you there? Then I ferment. So oxygen has nothing to do with anything involved with any of these until the end. What the idea is this, why would I go through all the trouble of pyruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, and at the end find out, oh, he's not here? Oh, I'm in trouble. Because look at this, if I go through all this trouble, and surprise, Lortzen is not here, that cell is dead. And then the other one is dead, then the other one is dead, then you're in trouble. No, can't risk that. So at the point of pyruvate, I'm going to ask, oxygen, are you here? Yes, then I'll do this. Are you here? No, then I'll ferment. Because regardless of oxygen being there or not, I must get rid of the pyruvate. It will make sense to you as we go forward here. So let's start talking about the event. The first thing that happens is, well, you have the cell membrane, you have the facilitator or the transporter for glucose. You have glucose. Glucose, again, is a six carbon molecule. It's C6H12O6. So this is at outside of the cell, this is inside of the cell. The glucose will be facilitated across the membrane and now it's in your cytoplasm. This is diffusion. Okay, now, now the glucose in the is in the cytoplasm, it will start breaking down. There are two main events occurring, multiple reactions, but I try to break it down to group them in two main events. The first main event is energy investment phase. This is the first main event. This is me doing this. A six carbon glucose breaks down to two G3Ps. The G3P is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Did I lose any carbons? No. Nope. Because look, we start with six and we still have six. The three C are the carbons. Again, my finger is the carbon, so we got six carbons. Here they are. Break two G3Ps. Did I lose any fingers? No. Nope. Very good question on the exam, by the way. Now, to get this done, this is called the energy investment phase. That means you must use some energy to get this process started. You're going to consume two ATPs to get it started. Some students say, wait, hang on, wait a minute. You're confusing me now. I thought we were making ATPs. I agree with you. But if I ask you, Give me two dollars, I'll give you thirty-eight. Would you give me would you give me two dollars and would you take me up on it? I hope so, unless you don't trust me with them with your money, right? So how does it get it in here? Say? How does it first get the ATP? It's in there. It's in your cells from the previous cellular aspiration. You always have ATP. So the first time you do it, how do you do it? The first 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 time? Yeah. Uh, ask uh, ask uh. <laughs> I don't know. All right, ask God, all right? Because this is glycolysis, like and it uses two ATPs, but it also yeah. creates two. Well, it'll create more than that. It creates two, but then the rest of it creates more. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, watch this. Here's the analogy for this, in case you're confused. Wait a minute, I thought we were making ATPs. What are you going to use? Why are you using the ATPs if we're trying to make them? I I'll tell you why. July the 4th comes around. We are, a lot of us have picnics on July the 4th. You invite the whole neighborhood to your picnic because you're the in guy on the, in the neighborhood. You're like, everybody wants to go to your party. So you buy the hamburger, the hot dogs, you got to get it all ready. And you go to light the barbecue. Surprise, you don't have a sparker. That means all you have is raw meat. This is the sparker. Spark. I'll give you a fire. You see that? That's the sparker. When you go to your barbecue and you add a little tiny spark, what do you end up with? Fire. So this is the spark 
the rest of cellular respiration is the fire. Are we catching the analogy here? Without the spark, you don't have a fire. So it's willing to do that. Hey, I'll give you two ATPs as long as you promise me to give them back to me and more. Okay, I'll do it then. So that's called the energy investment phase because you're investing two ATPs. At the end of this phase, you have two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates. Alright, the next step, or the next set of steps, will be called the energy payoff phase. Now, it's starting to pay you back. Because each glycer three, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate three will convert to pyruvate. So this is equivalent to doing this. Glucose, spark, two G3Ps. Change to pyruvate. That's it, that's glycol. Did we lose any carbons? No, because you still have six carbons. The original six, they're still here. Now, in the process of G3P becoming pyruvate, look at this, two ADPs are phosphorylated by substrate level phosphorylation, like what I did with your classmate here. Well, it's the same thing here. Two ADPs phosphorylate, are phosphorylated to a two ATPs by substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, what is the definition of substrate level phosphorylation in words? Easy. The simple transfer of a phosphate from a substrate to ADP, because that's what I showed you when I demoed it. And now, in the same process, you're loading trucks. Look at that, an empty U-Haul, full U-Haul. Now, no furniture here, electrons and hydrogen, all right? Electrons and hydrogen are being loaded here. And look at that, whatever happens here, also happens here. So at the end of glycolysis, you have to do a tally. What do we have? At the end of glycolysis, we have two pyruvates. We have two NADHs, loaded trucks. We have four ATPs. Oh, watch out for this one. Yes, you made four, but you used two. Do you remember that? So the net gain is what? Is two. So even though you made four, you have to take into account that you use two. So if I give you four dollars and you use two of them, you'd be crazy walking around thinking that you still have four dollars. You only have two now. Okay? Here's another question. Where does all of this happen? In the cytoplasm. So this is my way of me telling you this. You're going to be overwhelmed with it. You're going to try sit down and figure it out. And it's going to come down to this. Your success on the next exam. Exam three is you remembering this information. You have to make a mental image of this slide. Because one of my questions on the exam will be, how many pyruvates at the end of glycolysis? How many? Two. How many net ATPs are made? Two. Where does it happen? Cytoplasm. How many carbons does glucose have? Six. Are there any carbons lost? No. no. Do you use oxygen to get this done? No. no. Is oxygen absence also important? Oxygen does, does not matter here. If you have oxygen, if you do not have oxygen, that does not matter because it has nothing to do with glycolysis. Oxygen only comes in play at this level right here. Because if you have it, you're going to do the full movie. If you don't have it, you're going to do the short movie, the fermentation. So what I tell students is, remember me saying this, oxygen determines the fate of pyruvate. But it has nothing to do with glycolysis. Oxygen will determine what happens to pyruvate. 
Okay, so make sure you remember this information. Now, this is just one of the charts. Eventually, you're gonna see another one. You're gonna see another one and another one. And then you're gonna have to build one chart that has the whole event. And we'll see if we can do that together, maybe in lab next week. While we're doing photosynthesis, we'll see if we can do that, okay? But know that this is not it. This is just part of it. All right. You can stop. Okay.